Jacob Zuma is back at Nkandla. He is a free man. He does, for the moment, not have the sword of Damocles of a possible return to prison hanging over him. Uh, the DA has said that it is almost certainly going to take the decision announced earlier today by the Correctional Services Commissioner and explained by the Justice and Correctional Services Minister, Ronald Lamola, on review. But for the moment, Jacob Zuma considers himself a free man. He apparently left in Kandla at three o'clock this morning, so he was obviously given advance notice that this was going to happen. He spent a very brief time at the escort prison uh, where he signed some documents and then he left. The first of over 9,000 prisoners serving relatively short sentences for non-violent crimes who have been given a remission of sentence. And the Justice Minister did his best to persuade the journalists and through the journalists, the public to which the journalists report, that the fact that Jacob Zuma was the first prisoner to benefit from this widespread remission was entirely coincidental. It had absolutely nothing to do with the identity of prisoner J.G. Zuma. Benedict Piri is a legal analyst, MD at Use Prudentia, Special Counsel, and uh, I said legal analyst already. Benedict, good afternoon. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Do you think that this is legally defensible, or would you join in the loudest of the choruses that we've heard today, which has been kind of along the lines, this is a legal joke? <laughs> Um, I, I think it, it, it does actually, it is quite comical when you look at it from the outside. Um, but certainly it, it is legally defensible as far as I see it, because uh, what do you have in a nutshell? You have uh, the Supreme Court of Appeal, which basically in its judgment uh, indicated that Mr. Zuma will have to go back to escort correctional facility, which happened. Um, and then, you know, the commissioner basically conceded that he had no powers to early to order the early release of Mr. Zuma, so he didn't do that. Um, and the other way that Mr. Zuma could have been uh, given an early release is through the powers of the president, which he has in terms of Section uh, 84 of the Constitution. So you have a president exercising a power that presidents have exercised uh, with routine in the past. I think obviously the timing uh, is very suspect and leads to the conclusion that it was done for Mr. Zuma, but ultimately it's a valid remission of sentence that will benefit at least 10,000 prisoners in the country, uh, and Mr. Zuma is the first to benefit. I think we must just live with the fact that he's the first to benefit. <laughs> uh, look, I, I suppose... <laughs> One of the arguments against this is, indeed, nobody's going to argue that the Constitution does not give the president authority to remit sentences. He clearly has that authority, but there is also an obligation on him to exercise those powers fairly and rationally. And I don't know what the DA's lawyers are saying to them, but if they do decide to take this on review, I suspect it's going to be on the grounds that this was an irrational and unfair exercise of the president's sentence remission powers. Yeah, I think they can absolutely go that, gr that route. And in fact, um, that would probably be the best way to frame uh, any argument that could potentially be successful. Uh, I think the problem that they will face is that, you know, these are powers of the president that actually just belong to him. It's one particular area of the Constitution where the president effectively has, you know, unfettered discretion, if I can call it that, you know. Um, and unless you can show that, uh, you know, something wrong in the 10,000, I think, you know, if you make it about Mr. Zuma and the ANC and uh, the president currently, then sure, you can get to that outcome. But if you actually look at it from an objective perspective and you say, well, there is a need uh, to alleviate overcrowding. This is one of the tools that have been used by not only this president, but by other presidents for various other policy reasons within the criminal justice system. Um, and never before has a president been challenged for a policy decision of that nature. Um, you know, I think it will be hard for the courts to intrude uh, on this particular terrain or domain that belongs to the president. 
Except that don't we want a system, I know that there is hardly a legal system anywhere in the world that genuinely treats each citizen in that legal jurisdiction equally. We know that. But that's what we are supposed to strive for, a system where everybody is equal for the law. And if the president exercises his powers to benefit one individual, then that is not what we are striving for. Well, he, he has benefited. I would, I would count and say he has benefited more than one individual. And as an afterthought. In, as yeah, an afterthought. But, uh, you know, I, 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 my view is that in this particular instance, the system has actually helped. Because what did we have? We had Shabir Sheikh and Jackie Chilevi gaming the system. Uh, Parliament amended the laws to ensure that we'd never have a scenario such as that. Mr. Arthur Fraser basically meddled with it and the court basically said he can't do that and as a result of that Mr. Zuma who defied a constitutional court judgment that was giving effect to the Zondo Commission uh, was jailed right and he actually went back to jail in giving effect to the court order so if you look at it the whole way other than Mr. Arthur Fraser everybody in the system has actually played their part and I think the only problem is that the president in this particular instance who does unfortunately have this particular power, um, you know, exercises in the manner that maybe if it was a week or two weeks, we might be feeling better. Uh, but in actual fact, as far as I'm concerned, the time period doesn't make a difference. Mr. Zuma would have benefited in any event. Benedict Perry, thank you very, very much for sharing your analysis with us. Benedict is a legal analyst and a special counsel and MD at Us Prudentia. Afternoon Drive with John Matham on Cape Talk.